This year, the Bevy game engine celebrated its fifth year as a project in 2025 with 44,000 stars on GitHub. And more interestingly, the downloads doubled this year with almost 4 million compared to 2 million last year. Let's kick it off with a few games that have shipped on Steam this year. Starting off with Toroban. Toroban is an infinitely wrapping puzzle game where you explore a non-linear overworld filled with interconnected puzzles. There are various biomes to experience, each with unique mechanics and themes, including grass, ruins, snow, fall, and desert. Next up, we've got Simulo, which is a 2D physics sandbox game where you can do anything. Well, almost anything. Users can use a variety of in-game tools to build whatever they could possibly imagine, from simple contraptions to, uh, simple contraptions. <laughs> or you can just use it to mess around with ragdolls. Simulo is particularly interesting because it integrates Bevy with a TypeScript front-end, while also using a number of community crates. Long Story 2, on the other hand, is a visual novel. Are you ready for more Long Story drama? The next installment of this beloved series brings more dates, deeper friendships, trickier dilemmas, and some fascinating surprises. On to the release recap for the year, we've got version 0 0.16, 0 0.17, and 0 0.18 is actually releasing right now. The release candidate is published on crates.io if you want to go check it out. So we'll mostly be talking about 16 and 17. Bevy is pre 1.0, so each 0.x release is effectively a major release. Bevy is also open source, so the last release we have the numbers for is 0.17, which had 278 contributors and 1,311 pull requests. The 0.18 release candidate is out now, though, as I just said, so we'll have a new release very, very soon. Bevy operates on a release train style release, and the 0.18 release candidate is putting us back on track for an every three month release train. Starting last year, working groups got introduced, which are one major way the Bevy community organizes group efforts, and there are a number of exciting developments. Hot patching Rust code landed support for hot reloading Rust code. This is powered by Dioxys' pioneering work on hot patching and the DXCLI. You can now hot reload Rust code in your Bevy application, with a couple caveats. The Tilemap Renderer Working Group shipped a minimal working implementation of a Tilemap Rendering Abstraction, which I've seen a number of people using already. The Audio Working Group has been making fantastic progress on an entire audio system overhaul, producing Firewheel and Bevy Seedling. Firewheel is like WGPU for audio, and Bevy Seedling is a sprouting integration with it for Bevy. Other working groups have also been making progress, including migrating to Weasel, the Observer's Overhaul, the Bevy CLI, and the Async Working Group. And proving that not every effort needs a working group to organize collaboration, there's been a lot of great work going into features like Bevy's Atmosphere, SunDisk, and General Lighting Environment. What you're seeing on screen here is the Atmosphere example in the Bevy repo with a full day-night cycle. Similarly, there's a lot of great work that I haven't mentioned, such as weekly improvements to the core UI systems, text layout, and a new experimental set of UI widgets in Bevy Feathers. And across the 0 0.16 and 0 0.17 releases, Bevy has landed a number of improvements. Some of my personal favorites include no standard support. I never thought I would ship code that ran on an old Game Boy Advance, but this year, due to Bevy landing no standard support, this became possible, and I actually did. On the ECS front, a huge feature was relationships. Inspired by Flex, Bevy ships support for one-to-one -one and one-to-many relationship components. The internal parent-child hierarchy was ported to use it and became child of and children. Users can create their own relationship components with their own constraints. The Bevy CLI has also been a huge benefit to deploying WASM projects. This is especially apparent seeing how many people used it for Bevy Jam number 6, where it handled things like building for WASM, configuring that WASM build, and also generating the index.html and JavaScript bindings. Decals and light textures both landed this year, which can be used for things like yellow paint arrows, bullet holes, putting graffiti on other geometry, or in the case of light textures, dappled lighting as well as any kind of gobo effect you might want. Solari also landed as experimental this year with the new Bevy Solari crate. This is Bevy's first steps towards real-time ray-traced lighting and has been making progress all year since it landed. The Solari demos have been really impressive and it's been great watching this one develop over time. The Bevy community also gathered in Utrecht for Rust Week 2025 and the Bevy Unconference was co-located with the Project Unconference that week. This resulted in new examples, new book chapters, and a bunch of other improvements. Every even-numbered release, Bevy runs a game jam, so the 0 0.16 game jam ran as Bevy Jam 6 this year, and there were 98 entries, which is an increase of about 20 this year. 
The winner of the jam was A Fistful of Boomerangs, where you play a lone cowboy with a trusty boomerang, survive increasingly challenging levels full of baddies looking to put you in an early grave. This one I had a ton of fun playing, and I kinda wish it had continued on to be a Steam release. As always, I cover the jams in more depth than other videos, so go check those out on the channel if you want to see the other entries. And as always, there are multiple crates published every single week. Here are a couple that I feel like highlighting, but as always, This Week in Bevy gets published every week, and if you want to keep up to date with the crates that people are publishing, those are the videos to watch. Starting off with Bevy Feronia, which is environment scattering tools and shaders and materials that prioritize visual fidelity and artistic freedom, as well as a declarative API and modularity. These are mostly for tinkerers and experimental right now, but you can already see some really great results coming from the crate. Noise, that's N-O-I-Z, is what I would kind of consider the ultimate noise generation crate on the Rust CPU side. The crate can obviously support the typical Perlin and Simplex noise, but is also endlessly customizable. If you dig into what makes noise noise in the first place, you will be able to build the kind of noise that you want to use for specific applications. Noise also supports things like derivatives and gradients. And of course, it's hard to talk about the crates in the ecosystem without mentioning avian physics, which is a huge effort and is in general a great example of what it looks like to do releases for a crate. I'll point you to the avian 0.4 release for the current versions, which of course got faster and better in all sorts of ways. And Motion GFX is a backend agnostic motion graphics framework built on top of Bevy that provides a modular foundation for procedural animations. I think this one in particular is close to my heart because I got my start in Flash, which this reminds me of, and also the videos I make here on YouTube, which could use some additional graphics. This project is also inspired by other projects in the Python or JavaScript ecosystems, such as Motion Canvas and MAnim. Next up, I'd want to mention Bevy Clip Map, which is an implementation of a GPU-based geometry clip map, which is an adaptive level of detail technique that allows you to render huge worlds for relatively cheap. And finally, for the crates, I'd like to mention a special shout out to Glizmo, which makes gizmos work in non-system contexts. So this means if you're building something like inverse kinematics and your functions aren't in a bevy system, you can still use gizmos to visualize when people actually do use it inside of their bevy game. And of course, Bevy's community crates also include multiple 2D lighting implementations, level editor integrations with Trench Room, Blender, LDTK, and Tiled, and so much more. And that's it for 2025 in Bevy. 2026 looks really exciting, but I am not going to talk about future work in this video. You'll just have to wait for this week in Bevy.